This week we're exploring the Sunshine City itself, St. Petersburg, Florida. Woo! Unlike its Russian namesake, St. Petersburg, Florida is drenched in sunshine year-round. In fact, it even holds a Guinness World Record for the most consecutive days of sun ever. A ridiculous 768. That's more than two years of permanent sunshine. And this perfect weather makes for a perfect beach town. With a vibrant center of broad, sun-dappled boulevards, palm-fringed coastline and graceful Art Deco buildings. Once a haven for real-life pirates of the Caribbean, the calm, warm waters around St. Pete are now filled with all manner of machine-powered boats and ships, particularly jet skis, which seem to be the preferred means for hopping between the beaches, outer banks and barrier islands down here on Florida's golden Gulf Coast. We've just been racing across the bay and we've just come across some kiteboarders who are doing some incredible tricks. The wind's picked up and it's made it perfect conditions for them. This is going to be a little bit insane. I've just been chatting to Anthony right here, and he says that if I give him a ride off the back of my jet ski, he can jump about 30 feet in the air. The shallow, sandy shores and coves around St. Pete make for an ideal kiteboarding conditions, as demonstrated by Anthony Frenchy from Kiteboarding St. Petersburg, who goes full James Bond to prove the point, using the momentum from my jet ski to hurl himself into the heavens and catch another Gulf Coast thermal. This is the way to see St. Pete. Sunshine, e-bike, murals, artists. Local artist Derek Donnelly leads tours of St. Pete's multicolored myriad of murals with scores of downtown walls dedicated to a magnificent kaleidoscope of street art, much of which was created as part of the annual Shine Mural Festival, which attracts the world's most talented graffiti artists to St. Pete every October. This one is particularly impressive because there's a light in the middle of the wall, but it's been turned into a ring on the finger, right. which I love. Yeah, yeah, so that's, a, that's part of the great things about mural arts, utilizing the architecture, either totally ignoring it or embracing it to you know, elevate the design a little bit. The murals give St. Pete an injection of color and creativity. It's as if the entire city is one magnificent art gallery. It's a very impressive baseball stadium, and they've got the titles to go with it. This town is absolutely littered with trophies. It's a place for winners, winning in the sunshine. St. Petersburg is home to the largest and the oldest shuffleboard club in the world. I'm going to find out what shuffleboarding is all about and how do you play. I've been very successful. I've, I've won three tournament of champions. This is a guy that is a hall of famer in the world of shuffleboard. This is the David Beckham or the Tom Brady. OK, Jerry, so all I can see here is a Christmas tree. Give me an idea of how we play. At, at the end of a frame, if the disc is in here, it counts 10 points. OK. But if it's in back here, which is called the kitchen, that's a minus 10 points. So you've got to stay out of this kitchen. You've got to stay out of the kitchen. That's what my mom always said to me when yeah. I was a kid. The game looks deceptively simple, but it's fiendishly unforgiving. You have to be gentle but firm with your pucks, and there's a frustratingly fine line between success and failure, between a hot streak on the court and getting burnt in the kitchen. As the shadows started to lengthen, we went from a quiet shuffleboard lesson into a giant shuffleboard party. From discs to disco. I've got a friend that I'd like to play with. Have you got anyone? Yeah, I've got a partner. All right. Jerry? You got, a, got an easy mark here. <laughs> so you're friends with a pro shuffleboard player. Exactly. Oh, yeah, Jerry! It was a pleasant surprise to see that all ages came out for Friday Night Shuffle. It's not like lawn bowling, oh, no, or croquet, or cribbage, a game dominated by senior citizens, but with age comes experience. And I decided to see if I could use some of Jerry's know-how to hustle some locals. I've got to be honest, I was confident of victory, but I'd overlooked one crucial factor. Too far. My own incompetence. I'm sorry, Jerry. 
This morning I've come to Tarpon Springs, which is just north of St. Pete and Clearwater, and I'm going to be trying flyboarding. I dare to fly. The question is, will I be able to? We are Flyboard Tampa. The flyboard is originally invented by a, a guy from France, and what he did is he captured the water from the back of the jet ski into a fire hose, basically. And then the fire hose is connected to the flyboard boots, which is, you know, pretty simple concept, but nobody had thought of it before. With a bit of practice, he could maybe be as good as me. Pride, they say, comes before a fall. And that proved to be exactly the case with flyboarding. A fun airborne hybrid somewhere between trampolining and surfing. The good news is that the water here in central Florida is permanently calm and warm. So you hardly notice the face plants and belly flops as you get the hang of the flyboard. Wow, that was incredible. It was like a cross between being Superman, Iron Man, an Aquaman, and now a hungry man. <laughs> St. Pete is most famous for its record-breaking sunshine, but it also has a world-beating food scene, particularly in terms of its fish and seafood restaurants, boasting an embarrassment of riches. That is incredibly fresh, and I'm not sharing. <laughs> St. Pete is a city that is absolutely chock full of art. There are amazing murals on pretty much every street corner. And then there's the Museum of Fine Art too. But when I went there, I heard the scene on the roof was where it was really buzzing. Noble Nectar are a local husband and wife team using the flat roof of St. Pete's Museum of Fine Arts to produce some particularly fine raw honey, thanks to their ever-growing colony of bees. With advance warning, visitors can turn up, suit up, and climb up to the roof to enjoy the city views and experience this sweet operation. Well, as they say, beauty is in the eye of the beeholder. I'll admit that it's possible that I may have gone one bee pun too far. As part of the beekeeping experience, they gave me this parting gift, a delicious bottle of their finest amber nectar. You can actually drink it. And it's delicious. And the good thing about the bottle is, you can slip it in your pocket and take it anywhere you go, like fishing. We took Jonathan out, JT, seemed to be his first time fishing, and um, caught him some fish. Come on, come on. <laughs> That's my first fish. Captain Bob has a saying, when in doubt, catch a trout. And this is a man who knows exactly where all the trout are off picturesque Clearwater Beach, where he takes his clients for popular catch and cook excursions. Dinner is served. Oh. <laughs> We've caught a few fish and the water is looking beautiful. Right, I'm ready to swim with the fishies. It's not just great fishing off Clearwater Beach, it's great swimming too, particularly around the dramatic Blue Hole, a natural 50-foot abyss in the middle of the shallow sandy bay. How's the water? <laughs> Bloody beautiful. <laughs> so the great thing about catch and cook is that you get a fantastic day out on the ocean fishing, you catch your own lunch, you bring it back and you know it's fresh because you've just caught it yourself. It's my fish. St. Pete is one of the best places in the world to enjoy clear-bottomed kayaking, a compromise between canoeing and snorkeling which allows you to see all the wildlife around and beneath you as you paddle. Shell Key in particular, an enormous preserve on the outskirts of St. Pete, is teeming with amazing life across its mangrove islands and seagrass beds. Full steam ahead to Irma's Pass. <laughs> There's a time on a tradition at Shell Key that if you find a shell with a hole in it, you can place it on the wishing tree at sunset and make a wish. I've got to be honest, after a blissful week down here in St. Pete and Clearwater, my wish is pretty obvious. I want to come back to this cheerful pocket of subtropical paradise as soon as possible. I just maybe need to practice my shuffleboarding a bit first.